Why does Mike McMahon hate bar fights? Well, nerd bar fights anyway. Hey, it is Dr. Trek, Larry Nemechek, coming at you from the heart of Trekland, letting the dust settle just a bit on all the Trek headlines. So instead of a hot take or a quick take, you get a second opinion from Dr. Trek. Hey, you know, I have been writing, editing, hosting, interviewing, witnessing, dot connecting, and yes, fanning Star Trek for a while now. And it makes me think, yes, it's been a few days now, but this episode Reflections, episode five of season three of Lower Decks, I've had it with Mike. Mike McMahon, what are you trying to do? Yes, the plot with Rutherford was great, wonderful. It was a great callback. We're diving into his backstory, but I'm talking about the B story. Or was it the B story? I'm talking about the career fair on Tolgana 4. Mariner and Boimler having to man the Starfleet booth, but it wasn't that, it was so insidious. It was so insidious. Do you hate bar fights, Mike McMahon? Do you just want to wipe out all the reason for fandom to exist? I mean, look look what you're doing. Very insidious, very, very radical how you insidiously wiped it in there into the subtext of the debates that Petra was having to rile up Boimler and Mariner, especially Beckett Mariner. Oh, yes, until Boimler until he blows his top. Oh, Bradward, what are you doing? They start small, they start small. Oh, engineering in the pod of the Cali class? Oh, there's an answer for that. Right, fine, we're not gonna debate that anymore. I mean, everything. Cisco's fate at the end of DS9, that gets brought up? What, you wind up, not in the booth, but even over with Rutherford's alter ego in the mental landscape. Boy, that's a tapestry done large there. You can't have both of them survive because one will eventually win out over the other. What is this, a reverse Tuvix? You're trying to settle the Tuvix debate? No, I'm talking about you hit the big two. What, are you going to wipe out 50 years of fandom, Mike? I'm talking the big two. First, first you bring up the modern Trek era's dilemma over why does every show have its own uniform? Well, Starfleet is just creative. And there's different, different uniforms for different tasks. And why not have the best of all worlds for whatever assignment you have? Which actually was what the excuse was for the DS9 uniforms originally. Do you all remember that? Do some of you go back so far that you remember? The jumpsuits on DS9 were supposed to be for station-based outpost duty. Whereas the next-gen uniforms were going to stay that way for, uh, for ship duty. And then, of course, everybody changes with the great... Do we call them the first contact, the gray tops? Had nothing to do with first contact in canon, but of course that was the meta reason. Look, big budget, we gotta be cinematic with our colors. Can't be the big color splotch pajama look anymore. And so then DS9 has to get it. And of course Voyager is lost in the Delta Quadrant and isn't gonna mess with it. They can't mess with it, even when they've got contract contact back with Starfleet and can just airdrop those files for new uniforms. They stick with the tried and true. Okay, fine. But yes, we've had a plethora of uniforms. And what happens in the so-called debate here going on between Mariner and Petra and then Boimler bonking off? No, it's a very rational reason. Mike, you're trying to settle all the canon debates that, that give fandom life meaning here in the aughts, in the teens, <laughs> in the Kurtzman era. And then what do you do? You hit, oh my God, Mike. Then you had to go and do it. Yeah. You had to go to the mother load. You had to, you had to hit the goose that lays the golden egg. Starfleet, military or scientific? You had to go there, didn't you? You had to rip the scab off that one, boy. Like you're going to settle it. Like Mariner of all people, Beckett Mariner is going to be the, uh, the sane, level-headed one to answer that for all of us. I was shocked, shocked, I tell you, to see that cannon smoothing and gap filling and the final word on everything is being delivered here in Lower Decks. In the third season, the fifth episode of Lower Decks Reflections, which by the way, finally somebody is using the episode title that we gave our early draft of Prophecy during our pitch for Voyager. Yeah, the second or third edition was called Reflections. You finally did it though. Your little, your little animated show that no one's paying attention to except for Easter egg grabbing. 
is trying to settle all the big canon debate questions, not just of the day, but things that have plagued us for years. The Klingon foreheads are settled. Romulan foreheads are settled. Here, I was thinking it was going to be a big bite out of the apple for you to take on trill heads. They can be east-west <laughs> instead of north-south. But no, you've got to get to the eternal theological, philosophical debate of what Starfleet is. The good news is, as riled up as I were for you to trying to settle that, I think I know fandom well enough that even being given a quasi black and white argument answer, even in the guise of one of our heroes, our lead heroes, even in animation, it's not gonna be enough for some people. Some fans, I feel like, are probably going to want to just keep debating it over and over again. So maybe, maybe I was a little tough on you, Mike. Maybe you haven't ended all nerd fights, bar fights, nerd sofa fights. Maybe around the game table fights. Maybe, maybe fan debate will live to fight another day. Although, I noticed there was one organization missing from that career fair on Tolgana 4. I didn't see a booth for the Canonista Debate Society. But, you know, that's just my second opinion. <laughs> You can leave a comment below, you can sign off, you can sign in and uh, debate me. Throw your comments around, whatever you want to do. You know, what do you think? Drop them below. Please, like and subscribe while you're doing it too, okay? Boost the signal. Hey, I dare you to subscribe for some Star Trek sanity <laughs> for a change. Most of all, hey, if you crave more Dr. Trek and the Trekland point of view, a little snarky today, I must say. But I hope I made my point. Hey, you can check out every podcast experience, live stream, everything that I do is right there at LarryNimacek.com. Thanks for checking out our second opinion. Trek well, everybody. <laughs>